Oh, hey. Nice to see you again. Hey, it's Alice the Dragon, and we're playing Delver again. We're going to continue the however many part series uh, on life, the universe, and everything. So, I was thinking that for this part, we're going to talk about fiction. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Ooh. Ooh, gooey stuff falling on me. Um, uh, you might be thinking, okay, so what does... That looks really suspicious. Do I have anything I can throw? Oh, why is my... Why is my inventory not working? Hold on. Hold on. There's something up with my controller. Uh... Be right back, guys. Okay, there we go. Now I can... Now I can do all the stuff I need today. Okay, so... Yeah, fiction. So you might be wondering why I'm talking about fiction if I'm talking about life, the universe, and everything. And I really want to see if I can just set this off if this is indeed a trap. It is not a trap, so that's fine. Um, yeah, so the interesting thing about fiction is that you can... Oh, here's the down ladder already. Uh, you can explore... Oh, Bella sees something outside. You can... You can play around with physics in fiction. Uh, if you look at things like superhero comics, yeah, those you will definitely find a lot of uh, playing around with physics. Yeah, because uh, you've got people who are able to do fantastic things. You know, you have settings where magic is a thing. Yeah, you know, like Harry Potter, for example. Uh, yeah, you have science fiction, where some incredible things can also happen, um, usually by some sort of tech, or, you know, something that is based on... Man, we've encountered nobody. It's really cool in here, though. Uh, I forget, can, uh, can you sprint in this game? Please. Oops. Not what I meant to do. Uh... No. But I think... No. Can't do it that way. Uh... And, uh, the... You know, the benefit of being able to play around with concepts in faith physics is you can come up with things that might actually be able to exist in the real world. Yeah, examples include the um, communicators in Star Trek. You remember flip phones? Or at least know what a flip phone is? Yeah, flip phones were based on the communicators in the original Star Trek. So that's really cool. And now those are obsolete. They're no longer a thing. Oh, the, the forgotten. Need to drop something. Um, drop my firebomb, maybe. Or I could just eat something. But I've got, I've got so many good things. So many good things. Like, I guess I could do without one of my restoration po potions. So, the forgotten is—is is this like a wand, or is it a? I guess it's. Hmm. Well, you know what? I'm gonna put it up here. It can do more damage. I'm gonna just try this for a little bit. Uh, a secret! Oh, that's... nope. Uh, why can I not drop things? I thought I set the drop key. Alright. Oh. Alright. Put it here. I want to read the note. There we go. And, let's see. 
Uh, day 133, effects of the right were not expected, but interesting nonetheless. Oop. Was that the... Was that it? Was that all? Okay, I guess... I guess so. Uh, you know what? Please excuse me again. I'm going to see if I can get that drop button to work, because that drop is pretty useful. So hang on. I love you. Okay, now, now I can drop stuff with a button, so... That's, that's, that's good. That's good stuff. Uh, when you think about, yeah, you know, how much technology is, oh, hello. Ghosts, get the ghosts. Yeah, get, get an arrow in him. Get an arrow in him. There we go. All right, so yay, gold and such. Um, yeah, the it's just I find it really cool how we can figure stuff out that. Pfft, yeah, that's that's funny. I want to check the map. Uh, okay, we're pretty good over here, so let's explore over. Oh, hello, ghosty! Ouch! I got you. Damn, these guys are tough. Okay. Um, yeah, the fact that we can, in our own world, yeah, you know, discover stuff that uh, we wouldn't otherwise through use of fiction, yeah, you know, I think says a lot about fiction's role in, you know, our exploration of of the universe. You know, the very unique and wonderful thing about humans is that we have an imagination. Woo! -hoo! Hello! Ah, oh, I'm gonna use up all my arrows. Get them. I think it's cool how they kind of glow. Got my arrows. Ice wand. Ice wand. I probably want one of those. Um... Uh, what? I am going to put that one there. Actually, uh, no. I still want the ice wand, so let's put that right there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Got a couple of ice wands here. So, burning. Don't want that. Get my arrows back. I mean, it's just so cool. It doesn't budge. It doesn't budge, so... Teleport... Discern reality? No. That might reveal something that uh, I wouldn't otherwise have seen. I would very much like to get in that door, but, you know, maybe, maybe that's just not in the cards right now. And I have so much more I, I want to say about fiction, so I guess, uh, I guess we're going down to one of the next places. And we're in the Lost City now. Where are we going next? Sewer 1. Yeah, let's check out the sewer branch. Ooh. It looks kind of gross in here. Uh, all that. I do not want to. Lucky dagger. Uh, fine short bow, range four, three to five. I don't think that's as good as my composite bow. So we'll just ignore that for the moment. Yeah, you know, when when you think of. You know, the possibility that our existence, I'm not going to say universe because, you know, it's, you know, it's very likely to be a multiverse just because of all the different possibilities of everything that happens, like, ever. Like, you could go left, you could go right, you could smash the barrel, you could get, you know, when you smash the barrel, you could either get gold or you could get something else or there could be nothing in there. Um, 
As far as the game is concerned, it isn't determined until you actually break the barrel. Yeah, it's a lot like Schrodinger's cat in that way. Uh, which, by the way, Schrodinger's cat was, uh, was not supposed to be an example of, you know, possibility theory, but more like, um, hello, bat. Come here. Come here. Like, Schrodinger's cat was supposed to be an example of the absurdity that, uh, yeah, that kind of comes along with, uh, ooh, come on. Yeah, the, uh, like, I forget exactly what the concept is called, but, it, but it's like, you know, the fact that, you know, a particle could be, you know, measured one way and, you know, measured one time and it has this result and then measured it, you know, and then, ooh, oh, hello, hello, come here, friend, let's play. Yes! I stunned you! Nice! Alright! Attack. I don't mind being slow. I mean, it probably will come in handy eventually to be faster. Ooh, that looks like a fancy. Right, Schro Schrodinger's cat was supposed to talk about how absurd you know, possibility theory is. And that is a lot better than what I've got. I'll be a bit slower, but you know what? That's fine. Get my arrow back. I'm just kind of wandering now. Like, oh! It's one of those guys. One of those guys. Ah, oh, I forgot the ice. The ice is better at close range. Ouch! Okay. Arrow it is. Okay, that that did it. Alright. So Yeah, you get to like multiverse theory where it's like, okay, there's a very distinct possibility that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, everything that could possibly be 3 to 6 damage, 4 to 10, that's, that's, gotta leave it. Uh, everything that could possibly be is represented somehow, somewhere. You know, it's just not necessarily in our dimension. And if you'll remember from, I think it was my last lecture. Ooh, this is loud. Ooh, hello, bat. There we go. Uh, if you remember from my last lecture series, man, that guy was tough. All right. Yeah, the, uh, ooh. Yeah, you have your length, width, breadth, and time. Ooh. Ooh. So many things. So many friends to play with. Hello. Hello. Come on over here. Oh, I dropped him down there. I dropped that guy over there. All right. Come on. Come on, buddy. Oh. He's going to go join his friend. Oh, my gosh. One, two, three, four guys down there. All right. Ooh, waterfall's making me bounce. Ah! Oh, it's not the waterfall, it's the ladder. I uh, can't really look down that far. Okay, whatever. Down we go! Chainmail coif? Oh, that, that might actually be kind of nice. I heard a bat. There could be a bat coming after me. There it is. Yes. Get him! 
Oh, yeah, you have length, breadth, width, breadth, and time. So those are the four that we can perceive. And uh, physicists, who I'm pretty sure are a bit smarter than me, uh, at least when it comes to physics, uh, I have heard that, uh, well, they believe that there are many dimensions, which means that there are universes, much like this one, that exist and um, do their own thing, really. Uh, I'm going to go north. Let's just explore all this, because I want to keep talking. <laughs> and I'm gonna... I'm gonna eat meat. Mmm, meat. Yeah, when, uh... You know, when you get down to it, you know... You know, the, the more and more I know about physics, the more and more it's just like, yeah, a multiverse theory? I believe that. And, uh, it could be that whatever part or conglomeration of parts um, I have that I perceive as myself could, could be that I'm making decisions about, ooh, about which, essentially, which universe to really uh, which universe I want to live in. Well, want being a relative term. Because it could just be a particle, or a bunch of particles, deciding to go left instead of right. Or up instead of down. Anybody down here? There could be a bunch of stuff down here that I just don't know about. It would be really cool if you could go under these waterfalls. Nope. Can't go under. <laughs> Alright. Oops. What did I hear? Oh, it's a bat. Alright. Get him! Get him! I do like this uh, paralyze on the mace, which is why I didn't switch to the other one that has slightly more... Yep, yeah, come on! Come on, bat. Come on over here. Yeah, you you want to bite me, don't you? Yeah, you want to bite me. Come on, you could choose to come over here and try to bite me. Yes. All right. Yeah, pers personally speaking, I definitely believe in yeah you know, the fact you know well not fact we don't know it for fact but the distinct possibility that there are other Alice the Dragons out there playing Delver, uh, and maybe they decided to go the, uh, down the other ladder. And, uh, that's cool. That's cool. They, they could be exploring somewhere else right now, giving a completely different lecture, maybe on the same subject. You never know. So, how does that relate to fiction? Well, first of all, just about every good, or at least reasonably good, piece of fiction that has Mage Bane. What is, what is Mage Bane? Is that a... that's a... okay, that's a ring. More agility, more attack. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, actually. You gotta take that. Um, 6 AC, speed 2, speed... No, like... It's the same AC. I don't really use magic that much. And it's less speed. Okay. I think I will call it there. Alright. So... Yeah, every piece of fiction potentially is represented somehow, somewhere. And, and that's... Ooh, ooh, that guy. Ooh, that guy. Where's he at? Where's he at? I'm 
because it doesn't seem like there's really any place he could be. Oh, it must be up this way. Okay. Okay. Let's find our way back then. Um, I think that if we go down this way... Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, why even walk on that? Why even walk on that? So, you have shows like, you know, you have shows like Rick and Morty, for example. And I know, you know, some of you out there might be groaning. Some of you out there might be going, yeah, Rick and Morty is the best. But um, there's only, for, for the purposes of this lecture, there's really only one uh, takeaway you need to um, take from it. And it's just, like, all the different possibilities... Yeah, as ridiculous as they might seem, make sense in their own... Why is it they always jump down into the water? Well, maybe not always, but a lot of the time. Scroll of greater health, that's kind of nice. That might be useful to put in my hot bar one of these days. Why'd I do that? Just shot an arrow into the water. Uh, health or attack? Attack. I want my arrow back. Ooh! Guy's shooting at me. Okay, where are you? Where are you? I see you. Ouch! Okay, that wasn't so bad. Alright. There was an arrow I dropped in here. Where'd I put it? Where'd it go? Or did it break? It break. Broke. Then okay, looks like it broke. Ah well. So it goes. Got 27 arrows left, which isn't isn't bad at all. Alright, arrows. Arrows. Scroll of freezing. Meh. A secret has been revealed. Okay. This is a secret. Works for me. Scroll of freezing, I'm just gonna leave. Um, so yeah, uh, different versions of reality. I like to think that they are, that anything that can be represented in fiction uh, can also exist somehow, somewhere. And yeah, that really doesn't mean anything for us specifically as human beings. One can't. No. But what can be incredibly useful for us is just, you know, seeing how... Oh my gosh! It's a whole bunch of you guys! Come on over! Let's party! Yeah! Ouch! Let's party! And I am poisoned! Alright. Woo! I am going to eat something. Oh, not what I meant to do. There we go. Oh, there's another guy. Come on! Come on! Come on, little wormy worm! Alright. Buckler. Terrible buckler. Hunter's bow. 7 to 13 damage. Yes. That, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, so, what's an example of a piece of fiction that we can learn something from. You know, besides the obvious ones like, oh, look, all the, all the Star Trek that, you know, we can get technology ideas from. Oh, you know, you know Star Wars, why not? Um, and what we can get about morality from it. But, you know, seeing as I'm a dudist, 
I think it would be very appropriate to talk about the Big Lebowski. Because, you know, for, for me specifically, you know, the Big Lebowski you know, tells a lot about living a low-stress life. Not a no-stress life, but a low-stress life. Because, you know, that's what the dude does, or at least tries to do. Ah, uh, just do this. Uh, yeah, that's what he tries to do throughout the movie. Yeah, he is obviously there for his friends when they need him. Um, and, yeah, he takes time to do things that he finds especially relaxing. You know, examples like, um, nice, it's a nice big area. I'm surprised that there isn't one of those flying guys in here. And, uh, yeah, examples include um, lying on his rug listening to music. Yeah, that's an example of something you can do just for yourself, you know, to relax. You know, he also takes a bath, you know, he, he does um, this odd little almost Tai Chi exercise while holding a white Russian. And, you know, that, that particular piece of fiction, where do we want to go next? Let's actually go to Sewers 2. Yeah, the, the, the thing that I really like, you know, I was, I was kind of draw, drawn to Buddhism uh, in, in college, but yeah, the thing that I just couldn't grok with, with Buddhism, by the way, there's uh, another great example of understanding our world through fiction. The, the word grok uh, is from Stranger in a Strange Land, and it pretty much means to understand in a way that incorporates into your worldview. So, you know, with Buddhism, you know, I could, I could understand it, I could answer the questions, it's like, oh yeah, you know, mindfulness, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I didn't take it into my heart at the time. But then, you, uh, you have The Big Lebowski, which definitely has, uh, in its own way, influences from Taoism and Buddhism. Uh, you know, just through the virtue of... Oh, this is the up! Oops. Okay, hold on, guys. And, uh... Yeah, that, like, that was kind of a way for me to... You know, tie the whole concept together. Of finding peace with yourself even when the world is chaos. And uh, a great real-life world example right now would be, of course, the, uh... Wait a minute. I, I came up from there. So where does that go? You know, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out anyway. If, if it goes somewhere I've been, you know, I'll just end the episode there. If it goes somewhere else, then, well, I'll also end the episode there, but uh, then we'll get to do something else next time. Uh, yeah, just, whoops. Such a maze, such a maze, these sewers. Uh, yeah, fiction can be a way... Alright, that's back to the lost city. Where's the... Okay, this is sewer one, so where's sewer two? Oh, this is gonna drive me crazy because it wasn't up there. It wasn't up there. I, I don't think it was over there. Maybe, you know, I'll check it out anyway, and that gives me a 
chance to ramble on. And, uh, yeah, the, yeah, one thing that, you know, dudists really like about the, about the Big Lebowski, um, is that, you know, we say that there are a fair number of cones in, uh, in the Big Lebowski, and a cone, it, well, it's either Cohen or Cone. Uh, it is like a phrase or um, like a very short story. Come here. Ooh, ale. I, I like I like ale. Let's uh, let's just pick that up real quick. Uh, yes. Get, get a little drunk. Yeah, you gotta keep your mind limber. That's weird. I, I could have sworn I came up here. I'm also gonna check out around here just in case there's a secret over here because you never know. Oh, there's a barrel. Let's get the barrel. There we go. Uh, so cones. Um... Uh, you know, phrases or stories that can kind of, kind of like take take a take a thought and you know kind of wrap it all up nicely. You know, tie the thought together, I suppose. Um, yeah, you, know, you know that rug really tied the room together. That's a cone because you know there's. You know, in all things, there's usually something that makes it complete. And it could be something as simple as a rug on the floor. And... It's just, it's just a really nice movie to refer back to whenever, like... Whenever you're feeling really stressed out, yeah, you know, being being the era of COVID nineteen, uh, you know, everybody's hunkering down and dealing with you know in a lot of cases a lot more stress than usual, and being able to find a piece of fiction that you can kind of think back on and be like, well, yeah. At, at least nobody's pissing on my rug. <laughs> or, you know, even if somebody does piss on my rug, I'll, I'll find some way to cope. And, you know, I've, you know, and the idea that somewhere, you know, the dude abides taking it easy for all us sinners. Because, you know, that's, that's very comforting to me. And, uh, and I hope it's comforting to you. We have come to the end of this particular floor in the dungeon. So I'm gonna call it here, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!